Right, we're even going into summertime, and it's almost going to be seeming normal again. Crickets, folks, crickets. Got to stop it. Whatever you can do, whatever you can do, start. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed, this is Cricketude Busting Episode BTW RLM 417. In the past, uh, in the future, we put that number in. You sh- might be able to track down the content that I'll be speaking to, and you too can do your di- deep dive. I just touch the surface, skip along the surface to make you aware of things. I consider all this stuff notice, not news, but notice. And we're told of things, and we're told of how things are being done and where things are working and where they're not. And more importantly is how they're not the underpinning of why, not just that a corruption is going on and all this and that, but how we've been taken down, how we are continually taken down. And as I've showed you, when you the, the world you see is a mimic of what was supposed to happen. So I'm not a fan of saying the government did this or government did that. That was just an establishment, a framework. And uh, what's cr- crawled into that framework is the termites that need to be eradicated. So we're going to talk a little bit about this today. And again, people are out there saying stuff. I may be under under uh, estimating how many people are really working uh, to stop this. We don't see I don't see much reflection behind the woodshed. And then when I see most people are they're leading with their chin. And I've asked you all don't lead with your chin. Those of you that will lead with your chin, <laughs> lead don't don't lead with your chin. There's a, a certain ways to approach this so you don't bring yourself into jeopardy. I advocate this for years and years. Those of you that have picked up on this realize when you start to apply it, it, it is a a position that you take and you don't really you move fast, but you don't move before you should, and you don't move in directions just because you have to. And then if you're prepared right, when they throw a curveball, if you will, you can still hit it out of the park. Now the problem is we're living in an occupied environment, an occupied world, an occupied country, an occupied we are an occupied people. And so it's not such a direct answer somehow. And I don't know what else to do. It's the way that it, it's come to me over the years. And what I've been shown, all my research then built into things that you're just shown. You just I can't even tell you where the well, I think I know the source, but no a lot of people will dismiss dismiss it. But things are showed to you once you're prepared that are like, they seem to be out out of left field, but they're totally right on. And they're out of left field because we keep wanting to put our prejudicial view on things like we know so much. And we don't, you know, nice, good people don't want to just, don't want to, can't really comprehend the bad. The the bad is so bad, you just can't even comprehend it. So I just look for the the signs of it. In this case with this, the the main, I told you this, this thing with the medical martial law, this medical imperative, the, the police power was going to be where the system was going. And you saw it happen. I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to say. That that's the when you look at this stuff long enough, there's well police power steps up really quickly. But how do they make it in order that it's almost unassailable was what I was focusing on years and years ago. And again the the writing was on the wall. The news, the notice to us was that they were tracking in on something. They had figured it out. And when it came time, they were going to spring it. And they come in steps, incrementally. It's known as incrementalism. So if we look at this condition that we're under, and and, and, and this, this also feeds into the system that's established, the infrastructure that's already there. It's, it, this thing feeds into that. As I was explaining to you before, we found a rule. I, I figured something was up in the rules that the law would not, the actual law, the established law would not allow to have a foreigner come into your locale and dictate something to your local official. And yet they were. And that was a clue to me, I don't know about anybody else, but to me to go look in the rules. The only way that it, these things can be done after legislation was facially lawful, facially constitutional. In other words, your communicable disease laws is a protection to make sure that only the people that are sick are going to be dealt with when they can also be showed to be non non um, cooperative and they want to be a problem. So there's a whole lot of steps in there that the legislature did fulfill. And so at that point, we were protected. And then these people came in and they said, well, outside influence is going to do something. So I looked at that and said, well, that can't be right. So where do I go? Well, the way they change this is in the rules. 
Well, that's the, you can see it's clearly outside of the law, clearly violative. I don't mean our opinion. I, we always have these opinions that it's violative, but when you really look at what the, the prison you live in, there's not much that's really violative. You really have to look a lot closer. And you have to frame things very particularly. And they, the system tries to frame them not, uh, unpart- they unparticularize these things. In fact, that's a major problem in these things as well. It's a tool that you look at, you can look at this. And if the protections were there and they allowed inf- outside influence into your locale to tell, dictate, or allow the local official to, to accept a foreign review of what should have been determined locally, the only way that could have actually been done, in my view, and to speed up my process of study would be that had to be done by promulgated rules. And where am I familiar with that? None other than in the mining law, none other than the federal agencies. What they do in this consensus process, what they do, what people would identify as a Hegelian, Hegel, Hegelian dialectic and things like that. The thing that we sued that was causing the problem in 2013. And defaulted out everybody, all the parties defaulted. That included the Bar Association, which is going to come prominent here when I get over to that point. Real quick today. Real quick. Firstly, first tab up. Sent to me. But going moving into this. So if they've, so I looked in the rules and found, for sure, I found it. It was. I found that they had promulgated a rule that did not fulfill the legislative intent. And so we've thrown that into a challenge. And that's, now it's part of the record for anybody to see. And, and it's, uh, it was also done because I realized that if they try to moot out our problems, they will have held the line and gotten incremental in- encroachment upon us, and most people wouldn't have a clue, and they're not going to have a clue, and it's even worse than that. You don't have a clue, and not many people are stepping up in the right way. And so there's a bunch of things at play here, and people just give up, and I understand that, but it, our lives are on the line. It's not even our lives. It's our future. The sons and daughters are on the line here. And there's another observation. When you start seeing this, you start realizing where your statuses are. You notice how to challenge them. You're not going to get into a lot of battles fast. You're not going to get into the battle. And then when you, as I've shown you, if you, you show the status is not what they're making it out, that's fraud. Now you got them in, and it's to, to affect a right or a, or a, a right or the property. Well, firstly, it's, you should look for the property, but the right, and you have to identify that. You have to be integrated enough to know what those are to be able to know you've been violated. Not just, oh, you say you have a right. No, it's got to be particularized. And uh, the, then, then you have them in a felony. Now, the, the other layer of occupation says that those folks aren't going to get caught. So this is our problem. This is our societal problem. We as a people, as peoples everywhere, have to step up. I don't know what else to do. I've, no one has brought me any, any counter than just, I mean, other than sitting down and twiddling your thumbs. I, I don't know what that's going to do. As you see, this thing just rolls out. If you do nothing, they just continue, as I've said over and over. But let's, let's move into... They've got all these things. They made these rules. They let other people, foreigners, not give the suggestion, and it's not even proved. And yet the law, the due process, says it must be proved. If my health is no one's business, if, if our health is no one's business, that's a property of ours as well. And any health problem I have is absolutely no one's business to know, absent a warrant. Right now we start imposing the, the law here. We, there has to be these requirements. This has to be firm first and foremost in your mind, not as an argument, as a position you take to a trespass upon you, an, an, an assault upon you, notwithstanding what the other one's claiming. But absent a warrant, then they come absent a warrant and you demand that, then only then, again, with this subject matter of communicable disease that we're under, if you don't assert the li- other limitation, it's not just that they come with any warrant, and it's not just that the warrant then gives them right across comprehensive right across your life it's only in the subject matter of the lawful warrant the lawful warrant is your identifying whether that warrant that the government has brought you or has created even under color is sufficient and this is where i got you quickly to those statute that stat one statute with a, f- a couple of steps like five or so steps that every state treats a little bit different so that's why you have to read each one of the states that you're in is the delineation of what the lawful warrant would be and the extent. Now, we hear about all this stuff. You have a special place, a place to the warrant functions, only to the things. Yeah, you're applying that. That's that communicable disease law that no one seems to want to be able to assert or even go read and get a, a, a five, three-by-five card and list the things. And then from the list of things that are required, demand from anybody making, an, uh, making the attack, the assault, 
the trespass on you, the demand that you need to do anything, if your health is yours, then they're going to have to be, you can quickly, not as an argument, you're looking to be the investigative reporter, as I've been saying, or as it's been said in other places, the incident report, to build your, your, your case. And this is administrative up front. It's just a private thing. You're not building to go to a lawsuit. Everyone complains, oh, I'm saying go to law, go to court. I don't know if, if you're not, see, if you're thinking, you prejudice yourself and you think I'm saying you have to go to court, you're not listening to me. And I can't speak to you. And that's one of the main problems. I've been offering all ways to avoid going to the courts. But at some point, you even have to go and you have to make an addressment to those corrupt courts. And as you've been, if anybody been watching what, what's been going on with the people I help, and one of them is well, fairly notorious, even though the media is shut silent on it, you start to watch the record being developed on how you out the corruption inside. And the hope there is that more people, like my listeners, take it to heart and understand they, they can use that record to go back and attack the system and go relentlessly. So if, if, if you feel your health is your business, your business, your concern, your individual, your entity, and it's private to you, and no one has absolutely nobody's business, absent a warrant, pursuant to a law and a lawful warrant there, relative to the constraint of subject matter, you get to demand that immediately up front. And those of you that are not, are not setting and making your record quick enough. And you let someone who believes they can run your life, whether they're foreign, domestic, or right in front of your face, to have a say. And anybody who you can say then, where's your war? Here's the point. Where am I getting at? What am I talking about? Is it so abstract? Any of you that have read the communicable disease law and you find the duty on the public health official, you find they have to get a report, a medical report from somewhere. It's not the end-all, be-all, but that's a good start. Your first question would be, do you have a medical report that I'm a, contagi I'm a contagious principal? Simple question. That's required by the law. And if you don't, you don't have the beginnings to start a warrant. The medical report doesn't give the warrant. The court gives the warrant. And so you can come back and talk to people not an argument. Say, well, before you can go there, before you infringe my rights, you, you have to produce the me the medical report. How, how do you even know me? How do you know? That, how do you know me that I'm not healthy? And is it? And it's none of your business that if I'm not, and to the extent. And if they don't come up with the medical report, and if you wanted to go then, I wouldn't even go then to that because I like a bunch of steps when I'm talking to people that are that stupid. That I just assert the fact that anyone who is saying otherwise than what I've just told you, anyone that wants to continue to bleat about how much of a danger you are without producing that medical report, they're a clear and present danger. You're also a felon. And I don't want to ramp stuff up, but if you don't have your mindset on this and you don't understand your right of citizen's arrest and you don't have your elements put together, which you should, it's all should be on the three by five card. Why? Because you're going to have to explain to a police officer what your charges are and how you got there. And I'm saying this because I'm trying to show you the future is coming here very quickly. You don't have that in your mouth that there's some very serious dire consequences coming for us. And if they don't have that first re that medical report, which they shouldn't know about anyway, we should defeat that right there, they're a clear and present danger to you. They're trespassing upon you. They're assaulting you. And again, we get uh, from John Jay, we get the idea maybe we should go to our statutes to see what the elements, the black and white elements are that we can actually say that. Not what we think, but what we know is the guideline. And I see lots of people talking, but they don't really quite get it. And, I, and I'm not saying I know. I'm learning all the time. I'm looking very carefully when I get through this, when I finally get down to the end. We're being told certain things on how we even have to think. And you say, oh, I don't want to do all that. Okay, look at what's going on in the world. Your world is being changed, transformed right before your eyes. And it, it'll be, you'll be lucky to have, again, what have they said? You're not going to have anything and you're going to like it. You like that? You just think about that. Is that. You want someone imposing that on you? So if you don't get the words in your mouth today in the black and white and make the objective basis and start to put, press back, and I say do it in a, in a letter, uh, in, a, in a document, in a, um, a record that you can make, create the administrative record, create the incident report that starts your own private administrative record, which you'll then put into letter form. Not going to court, 
you're going to get the record made. You make it. Like I tell people, people are confused. They get a letter from the government or they don't get a response. And they go, what do I do? I say, well, make a letter that they didn't respond and relate to the first letter that you sent that you should have sent return receipt, certified mail return receipt requested. You put that in the second letter, the follow-up, said they didn't respond. Now you've got it. You've got the fact that you've sent the message. And, they're, and now they're on notice that they have unreasonably and unlawfully not responded. Why was that so hard? But it seems that we put all these obstacles in front of us. And we're coming to the point where all those obstacles will be the excuses that will never stop what's up against us. So if our health is our own, we're going to have an ob- we have the obligation, obligation and duty to ourselves to protect it. You've got to get a word in your mouth about what that's going to be. The objective basis is the best way I know that cannot be taken from you at the point of discussion that even a cop can't get you down, can't beat you to the ground because you were resisting a valid law. When in fact, that's, that's the fraud. That's the mimic of what's going on. And I'll get to some of this, this, what it appears. I talked about deception, deceivers, deception long time ago. I talked about it building into this long time ago. I said, here, here comes the time. But if, again, if you start looking at if you have certain things, then it's up to you. You're obligated to protect that. And someone who, when you can do that, then anybody who is saying otherwise to the black and white is that clear and present danger and a felon. That raise, if you can articulate that, you, know, you can raise the, the issue or the charge. You can then move into citizen's arrest. That becomes a whole different level of responsibility. And I'll talk to you about that, too. That's a very, we're, do, we're in dangerous territory that we have to do this at all. And so you've got to look very carefully at your state laws for citizen's arrest if you're going to go there. You're finally going to put your foot down on a lot of this nonsense. And it might go there. I would try and do it with the words, and I'd do the incident report, and I'd try to walk away if I could. Would not let them do more than the accosting of me and by stopping me and my wanting to go somewhere. And they they don't have a, a report or record that I'm somebody who's evading the communi- the communicable disease law and evading the public health official. Now you're setting your record. You try to do that first. You don't try to attack people. You don't try to arrest them right up front. But when a push comes to shove, what are you going to say? And I'm just I'm trying to well I'm, I'm explaining to you what you may have in your have to have in your mind. And so, so moving in, if, if your health is yours, and you're going to have to protect it because there's people that are attacking you. Everybody thinks they have a right, but they don't have the first clue what the black and white says. And I'm giving you a little bit of an insight how you can even kill the, the foreigner coming in to give the suggestion that you just might be presumed so, you asymptomatic. So similarly, similarly, the people, people having the right to speech, you have the right to speech unfiltered by masked fraud. You'll say that, but do you know how to reassert it? You need to at least get that statement in that as you have the right. You need to be able to then bring up what? The masked fraud that underpins the fact that they don't have this record. So everything they're stating, the whole presentation is fraud. So people have the right to free speech unfiltered by fraud. People have the right to free speech unfiltered by Kobe fraud. And this thing you're watching, this masquerade, this mimic masquerade, is UN liberty, unliberty, and UN truth, untruth. The masquerade hides the lack of radiance in those that are behind the mask, the bandito. And remember this mimic. You can look into the world and you'll watch. It's like the yin, yin and yang. If you're on the... the um, radiant side, you're on the side of just the truth and justice, if you will, you'll be looking at those that are on the dark side, if you will, and they will believe that they're in virtue. And this is the subtle T when you start looking at what's going on. And I'm going to read something that came to mind, and it ends up playing out this week as well, uh, that speaks to this. And I'm going to just touch the, I'm going to get, I'm going to get there. (laughs) I'll uh, get there, and it uh, just touches the surface. I'm just going to talk about the surface, but when you look at the depth of this, this evil that's come on us that we're really allowing, that we don't have any real words for other than you can't do that, or I'm not going to, or I, I resist instead of saying more properly what you ought to say against someone that's attacking you and has the mass the immaturity and the mass lack of mentality to deal with it against you. This is a serious, serious problem. Again, when everything's flipped upside down, when, when healthy people are deemed to be the cause, you have to really, really reassess what you're 
into what's going on or with what's what's going on where you asymptomats are guilty for being blamed for symptom deficit disorder you have a serious problem and since when do people need an exemption to opt out of a medical treatment having death as a possible adverse reaction it has to be insanity since when and it's never it's going it never ever should have been and never ever can be, should be will be if you only but only if you step up against that insanity and that's all I'm here behind the woodshed uh, to do is to try and explain all the different ways that you might think about how to get at that for yourself protect yourself I, I can't I'm not I can't help anybody I can only help I can only offer and then hope people accept what I've been saying at least to reorient where they really need to be to move to protect them quicker I can't talk to the people that want to do la, la, la and think they know what I'm talking about and it misinterpret what I'm saying. Or anybody, as I've told you, don't, go takes, oh, they're hurting so bad they grab anybody's so-called process of how you, the answer, the silver bullet, and they think that's going to work. These are serious problems. And we all we can't be running into that. They want people to do that. Because, and here's the point, you want to make sure you're doing it perfectly. And I'm going to give you an example about how it's so bad and we still have to prevail at some point. But I think knowing about it, as we all start knowing, and we all start earnestly supporting each other and moving in our own way on how to redress things. And I've, I talk to many people, send me people, send me emails, they communicate here and there. Everyone has their own way of that they want to approach it. And it's not about even, sometimes it's not even about making records necessarily more than people are, they want to educate people. No, I, I haven't found much help in that. In fact, any education I've done is just turned away. People don't really seem to be. But if you're that one that does that, that's what you need to do. So I don't have a judgment against how it's because you don't want to do a court case. I don't. That's not my my position. I reference that because that's my study for thirty something years now. Not just judicial, but administrative. How we've been taken down doing the system analysis. Understanding what started to happen, not having every answer, and I certainly don't have an answer for the corruption in the system, not as as comprehensive. And we're going to hear about this. If you didn't understand it from me, you're going to hear it from someone who's inside the system now in a video that just came to me. We have some serious problems, and as long as we don't step up into that, however and wherever, or support those that are in it, we are certainly looking at that dark winter. I don't know what else to say. That's a hope for the other side, the darkness, the dark side of darkness. And yet the answers for being light, radiant, truth, free, in liberty, if you will, taking that as what most people think it is in the in the broadest sense, within a constraint, always have a reality is an interesting thing. The creation is an interesting thing. That's our constraint anyway. Of the things that have been occupied, taken over, that we were told were good, in fact, that was a, that was another fraud, but that's not an excuse that we can rely on the fact that it's, we were told that. So we we do have more work, and I I say that we do have more work because uh, despite anybody's uh, statement to the contrary about that, when you do not fight against it, the wrongdoer wins. That's just a that's just a rule of this place. It's a fallen place. And at some point, we really, we can't, we, each one of us can't save it. What we have the ability to do, as you see, reflected like in constitutions, and I'll go back to Virginia, once most people see it, they can throw it down. And relatively quickly. And so it's, member, uh, this idea, it's the, the unity, the mimic unity they want to bring you in is actually the controlled unity. The one you want is where each one of you is just, is flat going after what you need to go after, completely non-dependent and right at the problem, not being part of the problem. And, oh, as I think about that, maybe I touch a little bit. Uh, I happened to see something in the chat, and it caught my eye, and I talked a little bit about it. I, I did go back, and we talked a little bit about it, and I found out, it, like I said, it's kind of difficult in the chat to get the context. When I say support people, this was somebody who was telling me, who was really explaining because I was ex asking people to do something, her, when she said the same thing, she essentially got got ass assaulted for doing that. And what the comment was, 
to me that Hal is calling on people to stop sitting by. Is he a saint? Well, that was slung at this one because this, this one decided to do something and was saying people have to do something like I do. And what the context that I missed, although the answer, how I responded was true. And this is the thing I, I appreciate about the truth, that you'll come to the truth no matter if you see it a little bit wrong and you don't, and you, you try to address it. What was being said to me was a warning because I was asking the listener to go do something. Look, the, what would be slung back at me in response would be, well, are you a saint? And so be, be careful about, again, I don't, I, I take no, no, um, I take no mind to that. That's just an absence. That people, are, we're out, those of us that are trying to do what we can, as best as we understand, are going to have those that appear to be consistent with your position and totally are not. And instead of supporting, being supportive or whatever, however you might even do, even at a distance, no, they, they attack you. And that's just a reflection of another, of a different failing in them. Again, the truth is a mirror. It's kind of interesting. And so, I want to clear, maybe clarify that, that Beth wasn't talking to me. She was talking about something that's happened to her and warning me, don't be careful what you're saying here because they're going to come at you with, you know, are you the saint? I mean, what are you doing? And I get that all the time, so I appreciate that. And I appreciated us talking about it because this is becoming a very serious problem. Amongst our own ranks, we have people that will do, I mean, say lots of things, and it's just a, a reflection, a knee-jerk reaction to their inabilities the lack of, of approach, and yet the, they're aware enough to see that we are in some trouble. And so I just ask people to stop fighting amongst each other, stop attacking, look at yourself, look at what you can do. I, like I said, I don't care if it's just a letter you write. If that's what gets you engaged, that puts a question mark in some someone who's making decisions for your, around your life in an official capacity at this point, or someone that comes under the color of that official declaration, like someone local in a store, you need to necessarily understand what you are up against and address it directly. You don't have to jump in with both feet. You don't have to make threats. You don't have to go to court. What you need to do is start understanding how to address this evil that's coming on us, and very quickly. That's in the local moment. you got to deal with it right there in the street, right where you live. It has nothing to do with anything else. And those examples will start, I think, eventually to work, work through, as the harm more comes on more and more people, as more and more people see they're being harmed, or there's no answer to harms, or there's no, well, there wouldn't be any recompense, recompense anyway if you're in a totally corrupt system, which it seems to be. Those are just crumbs they throw out to get people's buy-in. You're you're in a bad, bad, bad way, and you have to rethink how that works for you. And I don't say jump in until you've looked around, but you can't wait forever. This thing's rolling pretty quickly. But So let me get on to what, really came to me and I was just stunned. I had to re-watch the whole, the whole video. It was about two hours long. Now, again, for those that know that there's corruption in the system, we're not talking about that there's corruption in the system. We're talking about someone who's in the system, who is a good guy, it sounds like. Now, I also have, I should say, there's a caveat. Well, if what he's talking about is true, I don't know if I want his case to win. But it's not about that, because what he's talking about looks to me that it would attach to anything where value is attached across systems in the Internet, uh, I mean the digital realm, and that might include uh, every, well, Bitcoin, uh, bit, uh, blockchain stuff, whatever value changes. They're talking about honor points in this, uh, and an attorney that's trying to promote a patent right. But that means you have to look very carefully at that. I don't agree with if, that they could win to do that, and then you're forced to go to digital anything that has value, social credit going across both domains because they would have a little piece of it. What am I saying? It means that public-private partnerships on patents, private rights, are now allowed to be in your life. And this is not much different. And it's not like I'm saying it's not happening. This is what your pharmaceutical system is about. Remember, those novel things are invented. Well, I'll get, maybe I'll get to that today. <laughs> so much to talk about and I'm already way down the track here. But this is a preparation, I guess, behind the woodshed. I don't know what to say. I come on talking. I got a bunch of tabs and then a thought comes to me and I feel you need to, you need the groundwork. Those of you that are interested, you, you need to really be circumspect of what's happening. And there's a, there's ways to address some of this. And we all have our, our capacities. I, I don't send a, I don't happen to live underneath a shining, I don't have a, a star that I live under that makes things easy for me. So, 
I may look at things a lot different than a lot of other people. I, I tend to have to prepare a, a lot more terrain before I get moving than what I'd even like to admit to doing to get me to then make a success. Because that's I know that I can I know I can be successful. It's just how am I going to get there when there's just a star I don't live under that allows me to go from point A to you know point Z with minimal interference. I've never ever seen that myself. So you can filter that if you're a, you have a shining star over you. You're born with a shining star over you. Then maybe you're the one that goes do the harder sh- stuff because it's not going to be me that does that. I find every I run into things that finds every obstacle somehow. Even though I've tried to plan around them, they're there. It's like that's my puzzle. That's going to be the thing I'm going to expose. And in doing that, I have I get lo- I for myself can see lots of things that way. It's the experience that you gain. It's not the thing I would want to do, but it's the only thing I see that I have I can do. When you, okay, for my perspective, when you look out in the world and everybody complains about things, well, and right, rightfully, the government sits there as a as a plunder. And so this is a and so why do you even do anything? It's kind of like it's already we're already living under the communism. Why should I work so hard when the next guy's given all the work that I do? Why is my my property not recognized and what? Why do I have property? Well, that's the same thing. That's what they're saying. You're going to have no property and like it. Right now, you're the you're the generation that doesn't like it. You're going to be gone, and the next generation is going to like it. But they're going to be in that next world of hurt. So someone sent me an, an, uh, a video. It's a constitutional crisis, indisputable evidence of widespread deep judicial corruption. Now that's the water into the bridge for me. But when I started listening to this, this is an attorney who's in Florida attempting to get a patent uh, rights. Uh, remedied for trust for the uh, breach and trespass and as i listen to this case if you want to know those of you want to understand part of the problem in the judiciary it's not just about that the corruption it's how it's acknowledgement of how widespread it's acknowledgement of what i tell you it's not just that it's there it's how it's there how what do you when you see certain things are you that when you see certain things, you can know. If you listen to this video, you'll witness the corruption. It's those eyes to see, I keep telling you. It's how I deal with what I'm, I can anticipate that they're going to do something. Just by their words, when I offer advice and con- hopefully constructive enough to at least make a record to head it off, out it, and expose how it's not proper. The problem is, we don't have a society that looks and says, hey, if that's not proper, that's me too. And they jump in and help. And so this this video, an attorney in, in Florida, I could not believe all the tactics that he's dealing with that are thrown at him that I deal with or have to deal with in all the years I've ever used d- d- done in the courts. It wasn't, oh, yeah, that's why, that's the corruption. No, this is a confirmation of, that when we were seeing and what we see, and when I tell you that you'll have to prepare for this and have an answer around, let's say, a misfiling or a lack of an untimely filing, that you, the statement that they bring in that's not an answer, you need to understand that. So that uh, this happens also when you do your letters administrative. They've learned because the attorneys, the attorneys are advising. It's all the same method. And so you can look by their words, the language they use. And if you learn to know what the black and white is and they, and they start speaking just off of that, off color, then you can identify it. You can call them out. This, this tape of this attorney who got, like I've said, they get, attorneys get in because they believe in justice and law and that's the, it and they embrace it and they embrace the courts and they revere the courts. I don't have that prejudice. Long time ago, this guy does. He still can't believe what's happening. But, when you listen to what's happening, you listen to the tactics, you will listen to what I've been telling you and why I tell you what I tell you. It's universal what the Bar Association judges do. Their occupation is complete. It's not limited to the uh, state courts either, as you'll hear. It does go into the federal court. This is why I'd really advocate not going into court. Try to solve it before you have to go into and, bef- and make a record that they can't draw you in. For those of you that have been listening to me, you know that's what I've been saying. And I've been help- helping anybody that would do it bring you into a better place and a better um, under awareness of this condition that 
allows these criminals in high places in our in not a high place in the offices of trust of the people to get away with it. And we don't have follow through, and I I'm guilty of that too, as I was telling you. We we only went so far. We didn't really go after the bar membership and complaint where now we hear we can hear that Alphonse Fagioli believes that there's an in, and I I believe that there would be something. You're not going to get any justice through it. What you do is you start hitting them in the pocketbook, so to speak, without the suit. You're not going to court yet. So, but you have to set up the record, and you have to talk on point about it. This gentleman, uh, this lawyer, and I don't have all the names. I forget uh, so much information here. You'll see it if you want to watch it. You listen to the hardship that they've gone off as an attorney and a lawyer trying to to advocate for the company that's he's got that is his client. What the court does, what the judges do, how they consolidate cases, how they strip you of the rights, how they don't follow a thing. And this guy believes there's justice in the world. He's working with a bunch of law school students that are looking in and, and they're asking now, well, if this is what this is, what do we? Why are we even learning to do law? Well, that's your society. That's what's going on. What was interesting, as I was listening to it, I, he was he this attorney would say profess a claim of problem. He'd have a problem with the way the court handle is. I found my mind just working and saying, I talking to the screen. Well, why don't you do this? Interestingly, he would go on to say what he did do about it, and I, I was highly consistent with his approach of what you think you should do, notwithstanding whether or not it ultimately worked. It was there's tools, and he was resorting to them. And I was like, started to check myself. How would I do that if I was faced with it? My check was pretty consistent with his check. What I found interesting when he got into the federal circuit, or the federal circuit court, not the district court of appeals, circuit court of appeals, but the federal circuit court. Now I've been in that court with a case, and we got treated with the mail not getting to where it belongs, right like he did. So this is all how they do it. And so you have to look and anticipate these kinds of things. And you make it as difficult for them as possible. Hopefully people are looking in to see it. But he wrote a mandamus to the Federal Circuit. The Federal Circuit came back, somewhat surprising to me as it was him, that they would could not address the state courts. They could not mandate the court not to do something. Now I understand it on the separation of powers and this and that, but the Federal Circuit and the patent information is exclusive to the federal courts. And, and at that point, the, Fed, the state is subject by its construction. And so I was a little surprised, as he was, and as to that determination by the Federal Circuit on asserting the patent rights at the Federal Circuit, where the jurisdiction sits, is exclusive to that, that circuit relative to this information. What he didn't do, but what came to my mind, and this is where you have your tools, I, my, my, I just you know, commented to my TV screen here, I guess my monitor, uh, why don't you file a declaratory judgment? They can declare that those court orders are, for, uh, are void. And so this is the thing I was telling you. When you understand what's going on, you have tools. And you don't know which one's going to push through the problem. We do have a problem. You can throw your hands up and ignore it, but tomorrow they're knocking on your door, if you will. Tomorrow they're taking more money from you. Tomorrow they're putting more regulations. You're wearing another mask. That I... I looked at that and said, well, do, just do a declaratory judgment. Have the Federal Circuit declare the state decisions on patent issues to be void. Shut them down. They have jurisdiction to do that. It's in the law. It's pretty straight, clear cut. And so I felt comfortable that what I suggest to you that we are facing and what I suggest to you that is things that are experientially to be met and to be anticipated, and you can anticipate them. And so you do things that you avoid that. They can't, in other words, you load the record that when they do it, you catch them, or they don't do it. They have to find some other way to evade actual justice. Is in this video to see. If you want to know, let's say, what the, what the David Toulis in Tennessee is up against, look at this video. I think, I don't know, they haven't, except for going to the federal sector, which he's got a record now to go there, which he's not, not going at this point. We're still trying to just focus on the state case. Everything that's happened... I think, in this video, happened in that case. And so, to me, it wasn't a surprise. It was just confirmation. We are in a terrible way with, relative to these so-called ju judicial courts. And they don't care. And they embrace fraud. And they are and they are part of the only common denominator I can find because it, this 
innocent, if you will, lawyer who just wants to believe law and order is there, and he can put reverence in the courts in the 11th Circuit, and then they mistreat him, and he still has reverence for it. That's a little bit of a delusion in my mind. I don't have such a prejudice. I can look and clearly say the common denominator here is the people that he went to, his own bar members, that are st all astonished at his treatment and won't step up in order to out the problem in the bar itself, the members itself, that come under the color of a judge. And so he's not seeing that. I'm not prejudiced by not seeing it, that that's the common denominator. We're back to that bar association. And so that we have a problem, and I don't know how, I don't have the answer for it. I just have a a dogged energy to keep pressing to expose it where I can. Now, I can't get everywhere. I can't do everything, and it's not one. Like I said, it's not just it's not just that there's corruption. How are they doing it? Once you can out that, now you have the the facts to make it more than an opinion. Because what are they hiding under? They're hiding under that they're the infallible, like the Pope. They're the infallible immunity, and their decisions are like God. And this is the problem I have with equity, is when it's all related to a conscience. Well, what happens when that conscience goes demonic? Which has happened, essentially. Now we're really in some trouble. And so it requires that we, we call this stuff out where we can. This gentleman in this video is doing that. Now, I don't understand. I, I don't quite know the motive. I do know the motive. There's billions and billions and billions of dollars involved. That's the underlying motive. But they have a patent right, which is another potential pro problem. But I don't know. It's, it's the, whole, the whole thing was looking more like, look at the proof of what I've been telling you, my listeners, of what to expect, that the corruption is, how it is, and how to out it, how to make these people look bad. At least try to embarrass them. And until we get more people see my thought, until we get more people that will engage at the level they can, everyone just thinks that everything is okay. Peachy keen. These people are not the criminals they are. Because if these people are doing, when you see, when you hear how these judges do this, and you hear the phrases they use to defeat people, in fact, you'll hear the word subject matter jurisdiction come up more than once in this video. Well, wouldn't you know, that's exactly the one of the main thrusts of the denial the dismissal of an equity action in Tennessee. Identical. Has no basis, but they just say it because they're the infallible ones. And so when you understand the, the status, they don't have the jurisdiction to do that. Right? They have to come by reason and logic and by the law. And so you make that record ahead of time. And then when they fall into the, they fall into the trap themselves, you just point it out. So we, this is a, you can take this and say, oh, well, we have no way to win, but that's the problem. You've then given up to the defeat. If you have a liberty, if you have, you want your life to be free, you're going to have to fight for it now, folks. And the corruption has built, been built up over time around us. But very few of us really see how and, and, and know that it has that way and how it has. I have a very small record to prove that. And that was that lawsuit in 2013. We laid our foundation there. We outed the Bar Association on how they pulled it off. Today is the same method, just a slightly different wording. We were up against the very same tactics that they did then in 2013. It's not like it's built up just since COVID. No, this is a systemic problem that you all have lived under, thinking that was an organic government. And so we, we have we do have some problems. So the question is, do we lay down and whimper and take it, take our beating, wear our mask, or be res resistant to not wear the mask? Or do we start to, to rise up as a people and say, no, we're going to bring back that truth. We're going to bring back that liberty. We're going to bring back the radiance that being free uh, requires. Because we were told we, that someone's going to take it from us. In this video, they refer to uh, something that, again, the subject matter jurisdiction, an article on jurisdiction. One of the judges involved wrote a document about jurisdiction, and when it came to a court case that he's now a judge on, uh, he totally abandoned his writings of years before, 2008. And when questioned about that, the judge says, I can change my mind. Well, it doesn't change the law, see. And so now you're looking, I want to point out, when they do that, they're talking, that's reflexive. They call it law, but it's not. 
It's reflexive law, they call it. It's actually reflexive plunder. It's reflexive abuse. It's reflexive of your attempt to get the rights you want, and they are saying, well, but the future won't allow it because the future holds there is no property and you will like it. So this is already ingrained into your system long before we got here you know, to see it for ourselves. And then they get, they threw COVID on us. Where apparently officials have no duty under the law whatsoever. They'll punt, they'll punt, beat you down about the law, they, the policy they make, the ordinances they state, which have no uh, force and effect actually. But, but you, you will be subject. Just like I tell you civil rights, your civil rights states, it tells you, you want to take the status and not, not defend yourself in more proper ways. You have the right of, to pay exactions of every kind. That's your only civil right, folks. And uh, no one's ever come to me in all these years to tell me that I was wrong. There's no other statute that says that and no other statute that says except. No, you, all the civil rights that you have under Title 42, Section 1981 are to pay exactions. Those are extortions, folks, wrongful extortions of every kind and no other. And so we, he faces a judge who wrote a paper who doesn't even follow his own writings that were in the law at the time, and now he's no longer going to follow that law. says he can change his mind. Well, he can't because the law didn't change. The principles didn't change. And this is another thing. You have to start standing on the principles. I've been advocating people, you folks, you stop talking. You go to a black and white authority that the other side reveres, and you, keep, you let that, uh, that authority speak, that guy speak. That old dude, let them speak the principles. As I'm saying that, I did my mind, this is a whole different approach that you have to take on against this whole condition. And, and that's all my mind says. It's, well, I mean, you know, kind of explained to me that as I listen to that, that spirit coming in to say, here, here's what this point is. It's attempting to find ways as you move through to show people without argument there is this problem and right exactly where it's at. And so it's a very quick thing, hopefully for them. But we're coming to the time when we're at that time almost, I think, that people are deluded enough that they won't be able to see. And as I've asked you over years, you've got to find ways to break into people. They're, they, it's a trouble. We're abused people. We, we have mental issues and it's been imposed upon us. We, we can't very well beat on people because they have a, an, an improper view of of our and don't work the way we are, but, but we still need their help. Everyone is in it together, if you will. This is us, us being uh, plundered by a, a small group of people. And so, uh, what came in also is okay. So there's something, somebody from the inside speaking, saying their experience in the system they revered. And I'm telling you, you want to read, you want to find out what's what's happening in the Tennessee case. You just read, look at that. I don't think there's, except for the federal side, there was all the excuses and the and the and the problem and the, the divisions and the divisions and all this and the misstatements and the fraudulent statements, the fraudulent representations and the allowance of all that and the treatment by the courts. You can just, I'm just saying, this is the case. This is it. This is what they do everywhere. Now, how many people know that and how many people are trying to take care of that? No, they're just for those of you that were saying, oh well. We, thinking, well, what are we going to do with the courts? Well, what have I said? You avoid them. Like I told the miners, and any miner that listens to me, they don't go to court now. We avoid that corruption. We don't allow them to have the case to defend ourselves with. So there's a way, other ways to get at it. You just position yourself so it's they can't, they, they, I say can't, but they have very little tangibility to getting you in that you don't have a quick way to, to either get back out or they realize it's too tenuous to go after you at that point. Like I've told you about, how did I, did, did I want to go to fight courts to fight for my right to the mining claim? No, no, I know the system. I know it's not it's not looking for any property. In fact, we just had another miner not given a remedy. He did it all wrong with that, and they utilized part of that. But they said, you have no rights here. You have got no property here. That's the future, folks. He has all the property, but they're the so-called judiciary. The bar member is not going to allow it to him. So why would I put that in that in that battlefield? Why would I want to put a challenge about my property that I know I possess exclusively? Put that as a question before a court. No, it's better just to avoid the court. 
and it's better to assert the, the separation to you, in, in this case, because our life is fairly well administrative, go ahead and do it there. And you're not in the, you're not going to court. We're not going to court to defend our property rights, which the court's not going to recognize. What we show is they don't have the right, and it's still a continuing question in the administrative side, to even think, okay, they say ripe. It's not even ripe under administration. It's not finished in the administrative side in order for us to go to have judicial review. The fraud called the judicial justice. Okay, so this is a, there's a reality here that we're facing. And I, I look in the world, I look at people, I look at fine people, and they're, they're just oblivious to this. And some of you are, are picking it up, some of you start realizing about it, and you're, you're starting to integrate these things. And I feel better for that, but there's still going to be the ability to, to stay and speak from inside, whether you're inside the system or you get attacked by that system. This attorney comes in and says, here, here's what I'm facing. You need to, you all need to know about it. And the, the Stu, what was it, Stu, what was his name? Stu Peters. Uh, he says, uh, you know, he's he's a, he's the advocate that doesn't have the liability to the bar association. He hit it, hit 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 the uh, foe between the eyes, so to speak, uh, which is an interesting. If you listen carefully, you see maybe little things here and there that that might come up and spring up for you to put in a word in your mouth. Although it would require that record that you need to make. Another video was sent to me. Someone from the used to be in the inside. An ex policeman speaks the truth regarding your inalienable rights. Now, I had trouble with the word inalienable here because, for the most part, he's actually talking about unalienable rights. Unalienables are predate the constitutions that were established, those rights within that are not predating, antecedent the Constitution, the formal establishment of a government. The ones inside that, those are the like civil rights, if you will, even the ones to pay exactions over Ukraine, those are inalienable. The civil applied rights are inalienable. The Politically bestowed rights are inalienable. Antecedent rights, like your God-given rights that people will speak to, your rights of just being men and women, your rights of just being in the world by your existence, those are all unalienable. And there was a, a, a contortion that was done, and I don't know if this was done because it, it, it was cute. I told you this before. It was cute at the time, but it, 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 was, it was, has a dire consequence because people have adopted that cuteness. And they don't really quite understand where they misspoke. They said unalienable. And unalienable was attached to a commerce consequence in the UCC, which was an improper application. And they were looking at all of our life as a big lien. Well, part of it can be looked at that way, but that's not what those words mean. Inalienable is alienability. And so you have to look at where it actually comes from. And the things that are inalienable... They are, they cannot be divested from you, not in the civil sense, that they're not the bad pronunciation. Alienable was a misinterpretation of what it's actually do. Alienation is what they're talking about in unalienable. Unalienable is about alienation of your property and your rights, alienating you from that. It's an alienation, almost as if it's a, well, they can force it from you or, or the, you can abandon it. You alienate the property from yourself in your actions. So these words are critical to really understand. And when they went to alienable, they stuck everything in a commercial context and put you in the wrong thing. That did make it inalienable rights. And everyone went down the wrong road. And so this one says enable rights, and he speaks to our right to travel and this and that. But he speaks through it. He's from the U.K. Interesting police thing. He does some interesting exposés, and he lays it out nice and clear for people. I know it's in the U.K. This will help. In the UK, uh, when I heard this, I said, I don't know what the people, the question in the UK is. I've said before, what's your problem? What are you still locked down for? He makes some interesting statements, right and clear. You can get the information yourself from what he says and do the research. I think this would be applicable to all the other crown holdings. Kanukistan over there, we're going to have another story from you here in a bit. Uh, and down in uh, New Zealand and or the uh, Australia and all those other places. They, I think this would all be applicable. You'd be able to trade these over in your laws or... In the United States, it's, I've been appreciative of the U.K. because it's a little bit more, more clear-cut in some areas, and Kanukistan as well, where our rights seem to have been obscured. Well, he speaks very clearly. We should be able to find those here in the United States. And what he speaks is going to be clearly, when you take away the queen in the United States and alter the Constitution, or the limitation of the Constitution and your antecedent rights as the king, as the queen, 
it speaks where he says, for those of you in the UK, listen very carefully. I thought this was very powerful. Quick answer about you being locked down. That it says that the queen and your passport, those of you that have passports in particular, it says the queen has, allows the right to travel. Now, that's a problem for us in America. We don't have to worry about a queen allowing us to travel. That was supposed to be the right of, of men uh, on the, uh, mankind, right? So there's a little bit of a problem there, and that kind of looked inalienable, where it's the queen giving, red, giving the right. But in fact, the passport, he claims, by the text, says you have that right, and the queen's already sanctioned that or allowed that. But they, the government, and he makes a very special distinction between the queen, the government, and the people, and the queen is to the people, and the government's this third wheel, this fifth wheel out there that needs to comport to what the queen says. All correct, but he, he, enu- he enumerates that for people very clearly. And so those of you that have passports in the UK, when the queen said you have the right to go, and they're saying, no, you got to stop for COVID, I think you have a problem with that officer and the queen, don't you? And they've taken that oath. The queen has taken an oath. The queen has also explained how this works. I am not too familiar with it. I didn't have time to really delve deep. I've heard this before. But to actually get into the nubbins of it, I didn't do. But it is, taking just the surface of what he says, it's, I think, fertile ground for all you all that are still locked down. If the queen says it was so, then who are these bureaucrats, these government officials, to, to say different? You have your license already if you need it. And so this is a very important thing. Another insider getting fed up and sickened by what he sees, people being harmed by cops, other cops, in terrible ways that shouldn't happen, that are. And he's offering information on how you're supposed to look at this, how you can look right. And he goes right back to the documentation of the government. It says right in there what they can and cannot do, and just as I have been. And I always refer to anybody else that wants to refer to this that the same way I'm going to embrace that, even to the extent that I don't know, but when I can go to a document that he talks about, I searched it out. I found a document. It comes right from the House of Commons Library. Coronavirus enforcing restrictions. And this is a library briefing paper. Discusses the enforcement of coronavirus restrictions regulations in England and Wales. With dolphins too, maybe. It explains how who has powers. Remember I told you powers are important. Powers are everything. And they're talking right to that. They're not talking about rights or anything. No, the power to act. And do you have the power to resist as, as well? Do they have the power to act over your power? Notwithstanding their so-called sovereign. He says, no, the queen's sovereign. The, the government is subservient to your antecedent rights. And you need to know them. So it explains, this paper explains the powers to enforce the restrictions and what those powers are. It also summarized statistics on a number of fixed penalty notices. Remember, there's your due process, notice opportunity, time, and place. The notice comes, you have a right to respond, the opportunity to respond, and you should, and you should do it properly. Not just say, I got rights. No, no, no. You get to come a little bit more formal, and you come a little bit more, more direct, and you then, as you would say, you bring back your notice, tells me that there was subject to this statute, but you didn't have, and I think this is going to be universal, you didn't declare... There's no first report that I was a communicable uh, agent, and there is no determination by the official that I am a risk to the public. So your assertion and notice is fraud. And if you have it like the United States, we go, if that's fraud in the mail, that's mail fraud. There's a statute for that. I would quote it, but I don't. my mind don't work that much that, that fast on all that. I, don't have that, that. I have to go look for it myself. I don't know which section. I, I, I'm going to say one, but it's probably maybe wrong. 1346 out of Title Title 18. That could be wrong. But you're looking for mail fraud. Because once you identify the papers of fraud, now it's mail using the fraud for the mail. Now you can go, you got a little bit of time to write another letter. You might be able to start that. But you, again, you're going to run these walls. The point is you're making that record. You bring those evidences of what you've done back into your record. And you show. you just start showing how widespread the fraud is, the corruption is against you and always underlying this point is what the habeas corpus because that's what's underlying all of this stuff for a private remedy right and so fixed penalties issued by the police for coronavirus offenses well this document is pretty interesting and i downloaded it and one of the important things he talks about if you just go read this is not going to a court case this is just reading what's there for you on the street 
there's a phrase, there's a passage, I don't, I think it was three point, section 3.5 in this document. The police sometimes conduct, it's the powers of the police. The police sometimes conduct a stop and account, quote, stop and account, where they stop a member of the public and ask them what they are doing. There is no police power to conduct a stop and account and coronavirus restrictions regulations do not, parenthetically, and never have provided for one. This document, government document, explains there is no police power to conduct a stop and account and coronavirus restriction regulations do not and never have provided for one. Members of the public are under no obligation to answer an officer's questions during a stop and account. They can remain silent if they do not wish to cooperate. Okay, go find that little passage. Go bring it out. You have it on a 3 by 5 card. You go relate. If you've got a passport, you bring that passport. You, you show them. You don't even show them the passport. You say, here, on the passport, it says this. The queen's already given my right of passage if I needed it from the queen. If my antecedent right before the government acknowledged it, if you, can, if you will, in the, even underneath the threat, in the um, Magna Carta prevail. We have this as a natural right. And then we get right back to what? And you don't have the warrant where, as I said before, breaking into the broadcast, you don't have the warrant under law that makes me subject. And so you have really quickly this gentleman, this police officer, clearly delineating the authorities. If you just listen and collect it up what he says, You'd have a package to present anybody that wants to come against you in the government, police or whatever, and you'd be a lot better prepared to either, well, first of all, to respond where they attack you and uh, trespass you, assault you, and fraudulently so, and you have a response, and then now you can make your record in case they gets worse. You also have your record you can make for any habeas corpus you should understand even if it's orally to present at any time. So this gentleman inside the system, astonished at the at the corruption, is here to clearly tell you what I've been saying in a different way, in a different country. It's in the documents. However, the rights are there. However, we would agree or disagree. When you says the Queen has already granted the right, if you will, and I can't remember, the, I wish I could remember his phraseology. It was a couple of days ago I heard it. It's done for that. Folks. Now we now the burden starts to flip. Your record is made, your, even your oral record, which you should be documenting while you're talking or recording and documenting. I always like to write because it gives me time as well. It breaks down some of the uh, some of the tension while I'm trying to write. Now, what did you say? And I'm writing, literally writing the notes and trying to make sense of them. And it gives me time to think as well. And, and I builds the time to build into what I want to build, uh, to create in the record and get documentation for it. And there's no, there's not the tension normally. That's partly what I use. A, 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 I carry a notepad wherever I go, and so it, it allows some distance, if you will, in the interaction. But so here you have the queen allowed you to pass. If you have the, uh, if you know that you have the right, the antecedent right, even beyond the queen, and now you get them into. They have to have a warrant, the warrant under the communicable disease laws, and they don't have the first report, let alone a determination you're some sort of public health risk. Okay, so. This begins the process. It becomes the first steps that you need to take in every account encounter, essentially, even where they want to go to the next step where they say, well, you have certain things to do, like social distancing and masks. And that. Well, that's for somebody who believes that, that they are either susceptible or they are a contagion. And they should have their papers of, of the report, and they should, if they're doing that, then the public health minister should have given them a paper that they're able to go about the country. They need to have that warrant themselves, or that, that obligation in paperwork. Without it, they're just, they've got no authority themselves to be making impositions. If you get the point here about the fact of what, there is due process that has to happen, and it's in written form. So your passport's in written form. This document says they don't have a right to stop an account. It's particular for COVID, uh, COVID virus, or COVID fraud, and they never have. It's an affront to your being free. And in violation of the of the Queen as well in the UK. I find that kind of interesting. You've got a third party to work with here. 
So they want to also impose masks, but as we have been going on, and I don't want to get too belabored about how we can continue to find, notwithstanding what YouTube might say, because we're contrary to the WHO, even though not the Rock Group or the AWA, but the World Health Organization, we can show within their own documents that they've been telling us that none of this is anything. Uh, YouTube will say, well, that it is something. In violation of your local law as well. See, that's another problem. They are in violation of your local health minister because they're declaring that the local health minister has declared you to be a contagious principal, and those like you, you asymptomats, are the problem, and you're speaking to those people. And if I ever get to it, and I have to move kind of quick, Justice Thomas has some, maybe something to say about being stopped from warning people, let's say on places like Twitter, but I won't get there quite yet. It's official, your mask can harm you. I don't know how many times we've been talking about this. The, the, the discussion here, an investigative journalist says, the signs are up so many places, no entrance without a mask, face required to enter without enter this facility. Remember when you go into the facility, you're looking for the facilities manager for the risk management guy that's making your, you're making your incident report. Remember that? Face masks obligatory in this store. That is all upon people that should have a minister's health order saying that they may be a contagion, but that the mask would help protect the public, not for those that don't have the paperwork. Anyway, this is the misinterpretation. This is the mimic of what law would be misapplied. Uh, the author goes here, as part of a new normal, people now regularly don't don the mask when adventuring indoors and even driving their cars as well. But recent events have called into the question the safety of some of the popular widely distributed masks. The Canadian government, Kanukistan, listen, I told you you're going to have some news today. Kanukistan government is now reporting that some masks distributed at daycare facilities have been found to be laced with graphene and are being culled out of circulation due to concerns about potential toxicity of graphene. Graphene is a product of nanotech and is a form of carbon and consists of nanoscop nanoscopically thin flakes of hexagonal arranged carbon atoms. Here it is. It's a, a Now we have the story of an adulterate. Another one, folks, is on top of like some people are claiming more gallons and the moving fibers and all this other stuff and you know, chip microchips that are implanted in your nose, up in your sinus passage, all this stuff that causes a question. But what is that about? That's agreeing to that PCR test, isn't it? The useless, meaningless PCR test that no one fights, that people just accept. So if you don't do what I just said in the last hour, and you don't develop what the black and white says, and you don't take heed to the people that are coming from the system to tell you we've got problems, and you start do it, don't do it more correctly, then you're going to have to be dealing with this question and hope the savior of the Canucastinian government is going to withdraw and cull those potentials. What about the other ones they haven't found? How does this even begin to happen? Well, the, they get your focus on the tip of the swab instead of saying, but this, this is all a fraud anyway. What are we doing here? Where, where have I been determined to be a risk to society? It's all up for you folks to do. This mask is that condition that is a mimicking, a mimicking virtue. And there was a, it started, a, some of the, I don't re relate to the Bible too much here, but there's principles that are told to us. It's almost a retelling of today. It's like history does repeat itself. The principles are reading. What came to my mind was a, something out of Second sec, Second Corinthians, relative to the veil, and the deceit at the, if you will, the end times, the time you're in that looks like the end times. I don't know when the end times is actually coming, but boy, we're sure looking like it. Although it can be a long stretched out thing, it was a time in history when someone put a veil over their face, but it was for the counter to what we're seeing. And this is where the more, de more deep discussion comes that I won't have time, and I don't know, even know if I'm really capable of going through it all. This, is, this became a very deep insight and discussion when we look at the problem of the deceptive mimic that's uh, uh, coming or here where the world is topsy-turvy, but people don't understand it that way, where evil becomes good, where embracing fraud becomes law. We're in those times now, so I don't see how we can avoid this. But the, uh, speaking to the veil in the Second Corinthians 3, 13, 3, 18, was, in my mind, very poignant on the surface, even just the surface reading. And if we look at what we say what we say here, and we look at what the, what the mask meant, 
what the absence of the mask means, and then you apply that to your society, you'll see that the people that are causing you to wear the mask are saying that they don't want you a certain way and you're agreeing. And that certain way ends up being free, doesn't it? We know that. When I see things in a, bio, in a book that's said to be written 2,000 years ago, and it looks like today, it even looks like triggered people back when, in the, literally the time of Moses. I have, I have to take uh, at least a, an amusement, an amusing look at this thing. How is this so consistent? You know, I think it all reduces down to our human, you know, our human or animal nature. We're just, we're just not, we're fallen. And so that it's exploited over and over again. And this passage uh, that I found was very, it just came to mind. I don't know why it came to mind. This is what happens. You just get these thoughts, go look, go look, go deep, go start searching. And it got real, they got real deep real fast, but I'm going to keep it on the surface of it. And it gets deep fast when you start looking at the mimic that goes on, the counter to what is actually supposed to happen. And when you see the radiance was being put behind a mask because people got triggered by it, you realize this is a false virtue signaling to be a bottom mask and you have no radiance in you. So I'll stop there because that's the more deep look. But uh, let me just read the passage. It, was, it kept striking me because it was very important to understand what we're under today and what this symbol. We, we're told people see it, people know it's non-freedom. Non, and they'll say it, the word liberty pops up in this version. So we're dealing in uh, liberty, the symbol of the lack of liberty. And the virtue of covering it up now is just breathtaking in a way. But the passage starts to read way down here at uh, whatever, I can't remember the section. Uh, anyway, uh, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until the day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ, but even until this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where that spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into say the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. Reading that, I was just called to go read it, don't know why. And I'm not a Bible reader, I used to be, but not anymore. Seeing about this veil over our face and what was going on with Moses and the, and the people blinded, and they didn't want to see it, is actually what's going on. That what that was, Moses was able to, he, when he went before the, the Lord, or, or communicated with the Lord, he took the mask off. When he's speaking to truth, when he faced truth, the mask came off. When he faced those that were virtue triggered, because at the time, the radiance of the truth was on Moses. He, had to, he was respectful enough to not trigger people. He failed his face. This says that was the evidence, the symbol of liberty itself. Moving it, I want to move, because some people get triggered by the, the Bible or talking about Christ and the Lord, and I've just not been called to call that out and make an issue of it. There's principles underlying all this stuff, and that's what I have focused on for many, many years. It's, it stops a lot of the, the noise. The mask represents a respect against insult. However, the mask is the insult that you're protecting is not the truth. And so the mask is not liberty. It's unliberty, as I said earlier. It's untruth. Because if we were amongst ourselves in truth, we wouldn't need the mask. And what we're seeing in the virtue signaling side is there's no radiance that's being hidden by the mask. Who virtue signals as if radiance is there, as if the truth is in them, and it's not. And so this is a, to me, was telling, it was instructive. This mask is a whole lot more than we think, I think. And especially in the times of this destruction of liberty, if I can put it, use that word more in the most general sense of it. The veil 
is the exam the evidence of the lack of liberty in the lack of being able to face the truth you don't need the veil if you're facing truth and so anyway i don't want to be, beat this it gets really for me interestingly much more deep relative to what i've talked about deception and how this thing what's coming at us how it it inverts everything you hear it all the time the inversion the I don't even know what the words are. It's not coming to me, so maybe I'm not to, not to speak more on it. The inversion of reality is this problem. It's speaking right through here. The basic function of this, I mean, the basic idea here was we're looking, being in the mask is an evidence of our lack of liberty, and the fact of that allowance is a people that are not in truth. And so we have something more to fight for, I think, than even though I don't want to wear a mask, oh, I can't breathe. Of course you can't breathe. But it's not about that. The symbols and powers and principal, principalities and all that are at work. When I've been watching this whole thing in a society, a global society, global societies collapse in the face of fraud. It's just astonishing to me. I don't I just can't get it. Except now, Hanukkah here you come again. More examples. Interesting uh, duality in Kanukistan this week, I think, if I got this right, kind of confusing a little bit, reading so much so fast, the uh, church steps up in this regard. This is kind of interesting how this all played together. And uh, one example we see a pastor throwing out the government. On the other, we see a pastor shedding tears because the government fenced off his church. And they're both resisting. And so it's Mike, maybe an object lesson about how you go about doing this. For me to tell you, there is a way, there's not likely a way to, one works and one doesn't. And this will work universally, I think. Again, when you look at, when I looked at not going deeply, when you go deeply on the past Second Corinthians, it doesn't matter really how you interpret that, what that mask is relative to the radiance behind it or not. The truth is the mask means that you are not in liberty. You're not in that being free. And you're not facing the truth. In other words, the faith, what you think is the truth is not the truth. You're facing the deception. That requires, we call it out. I don't know what else more to say. But uh, a pastor came in through the news. A, a couple of stories came up in Kanukistan. The pastor up in, uh, I think it was the Calvary one, is where I get kind of confused. It's the title of the article here, and then we'll get a video. I won't play it, but you can get to see it. Out, out, you Nazis, out! Gestapo is not allowed here. Pastor throws Canadian cops out of church. Uh, interesting story. Artur, Artur Palowski, the pastor of Cave of Adulam Church in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Kanukistan, shouted down police officers who interrupted his church service during Passover. During Passover. I'll end that. Just to, You can read all the stories. Some of you may already know about this. I was just uh, impressed by his um, the strength of his presentation, the the certainty of his presentation happens to be he's been doing this a while. So that there, I, I understood now that, that you get that from practice. He also is a man of his own word, so he's going to have that truth in him, facing down the masked ones as well. Uh, interesting condition. They he does walk these cops out. Now, what uh, my concern was really what what might they do? But then I found out he's been doing over a hundred times. He's been in, like involved with arrests or something on this very point. So he's not a guy to back down. He brings the truth and the, the light, if you will. He brings the freedom to say no, importantly, in a very assertive way. And I think we could learn lessons on how to get that bearing against these criminals, the literal criminals in math, the banditos, that are virtue signaling their lack of radiance and perpetuating it as the mimic for radiance, protecting that this pastor, in my mind, was impressive enough in his assertions. Uh, it, it actually spoke to me of some people I've I've known from Eastern Europe, close friends of mine. And they understood the problem of this what we call communism or socialism, the, the this Nazis, if you will, the Gestapo thing. He, these people I've met were my friends. They knew this to a T. They came up through the World War II. They were freedom fighters. They were the resistance. Uh, boy, they had a, a thing to show, explain to me. 
I never lived it, but living, kind of living through their stories and living through their insight, they did not put up with the stuff that we are seeing today. And this remind this guy reminds me about about my older friends. In fact, they're not alive now. They they've been old enough that they have died. But uh, and uh, fond memories of that strength, stepping up. If you can say, being a man, well, you also have to be a woman here. You have to be strong. You have to have the truth in you. And you have to face the truth without, if you will, without a without a mask, without the covering. You're you are moving the truth forward, and you don't have to hide behind that veil. That was that was taken away. It says, and so we, I guess, in my view, is that this is just more for me to another thing to underpin the certainty of our needing to stand up and protect ourselves. We are in the right. We have no reason to capitulate one little bit. This pastor does it. Really interest, impressive, I guess. Not to, we don't see too much of it. We need to see more of it. On the other hand, Pinochistan, we have the other thing going on. Canadian church fenced off by authorities for breaking COVID-19 rules. The church was run by controversial pastor James Coates, who has already been jailed during the pandemic. Now, I, I read that, and I'm wondering why. If they listen behind the woodshed, they may have had a better word in their mouth to make at least the question, continuing question of where was the church created, uh, declared a, a risk? Uh, where were anyone in there declared to be the, the contagious principle? And you put, you put the onus back on the government where it belongs, and you can use the habeas corpus to do so. The problem is you're watching this whole church be taken down, and that becomes important relative to something that's happening in New York, uh, interestingly, at the, at the same time. Alberta authorities have physically closed a church that was flagl- frag- fl- fragrantly, flagrantly breaking COVID regulations. And this is, again, you read, this is the, the media that's promoting that the fraud is reality. The fraud is truth. Now, it's masked, but the fraud is masked, so you don't see it. It's masked behind this deceit. But anybody coming in a mask isn't speaking truth. Can't be. You don't need a mask when you're facing truth. The Grace Life Church of Edmonton has been, has been one of the places of worship at the center of the holy war waged by a group of pastors against the protocols of the elders of Zion, uh, learned in elders of Zion, uh, uh, protocols put into the redu- to reduce the pandemic death count. Early Wednesday morning, the health authorities and RCMP officers went to church, blocked off the roads, I thought the Queen said, you have a right, folks. Uh, blocked off the road surrounding it and erected the erection of steel fence around it. Another mask. Remember that? It was the fence that I said to the killer bee, or to the mask is is like a, is like to a killer bee through a chain link fence. That's what they put up around the church. There's this chain link fence. This is the first time during the pandemic that Canadian authorities have stepped in to forcibly close a place of worship. Province first ordered the church closed to close on January 19th, but Grace Life Church paid no heed. Well, they ought to have paid no heed, but they should have acted more properly, my thought, not to judge them. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to say we have a better thing to step up. And interestingly, how was it another play, another church was able to run the cops off? Although, man, I haven't heard they came back and fenced that church off. And so there's a different interaction going on. I'm not sure the dynamic about that. But these two different treatments are interesting to me. And always, when I said, when you see an anomaly, go look at it. It might give you clues as to how this thing works. I suspect the first authority speaking, has they know that he has an ability to out them for what they are not doing correctly. I don't know that. Never talked to the man. But somehow, and this, okay, so the, you see a, a, someone being very strong against the government. This pastor is on tape crying as they, as they put, they chain they chain linked up his church, that's not the sign of someone of conviction. First of all, secondly, it's not someone who has the law on their side, whether that's the civil law or the religious law. And I'll have to give a caveat: your religious rights will not stand on their own for this. It's what underlies the condition where the officials failed that actually does that that they then infringe on a fundamental right that the government doesn't actually want to give you, which is your right to religious freedom, is not going to be the strongest position you can take. And that's why I've advocated even for the churches, do not lead with your right of freedom of assembly and worship. Do not write with the separation of powers, the promise 
that's breached already. That becomes the harm. You lead, you have to lead there then to attack this. You have to lead with the failure of the government on any one of you. Because now they're going to do the last. So do that on the, on the minimum on the one of you because then they're going to be harder to do the last when they get you all at one time. And that's coming here in the New York. I'll get to that story. So another set of stories here, videos. You can see the one pastor's running off the cops. The other one's crying because his church is being chain linked up. And uh, the cops are stopping your access, ingress, and egress. And I don't understand how all this happens and people allow it. I don't even need the Bible to stop all that. I just need to have enough people that will assert that the queen just told, the queen already said so. Now, isn't the queen supposed to support the church as well? Oh, now you're relying on another authority other than the queen. It might sound kind of odd. What I'm saying is you have to throw a whole lot of obstacles out because when you get to the first set of obstacles that the government has failed, then you get to the antecedent authority that says what the queen's talking to. There's your power kicking back in. So we have a video of the, the church being done if you want to see it. I found it interesting, two different two different discussions. What I also found interesting is up there you see the the fraction, the fracturing of the system, the church. You have two churches, one standing up strong, another one not so strong. You see the duality there, but then you also see the another faction, the third party church saying, Good, it should have happened to them. You see what happened in the United States where most uh, uh, seemingly a lot of the pastors in the 90s were subverted from church into state oversight. Where we started to get a lot of this uh, promotion of Romans 13, you got to obey the government nonsense. Totally taken out of context. And so these are principles I'm speaking to here, mostly. Even though, yes, it's Sunday and yes, we're speaking of Bible things and of church. These are universal truths going on that we're not standing up and being strong as men or women to defend ourselves. And not that, well, I've got a book that will protect me. No, that devolved down into duties and obligations of local officials. If they want to be in the Romans government, they're going to have to follow that. They have to follow what they were told that devolved down, not as they make up. Good news, Calgary Church leader stands by HHS decision to close Grace Life. Now they've divided the church, the, the, the church so-called, and I'm really not into church and I'm not into religion. This has nothing to do with that. There's underlying principles that we can rely on. I don't like any of the deception. Most all of it seems to be a deception, especially when I notice what happened in the 90s with the pastors, even if I had a, an inclination. And uh, so don't, Again, I'm not advocating anything in particular other than you need to stand up and you need to find your own principles and they ought to be in a place that's objectively pointed to so that nobody can twist and turn them, which is the how you get defeated. Like I tell the miners, you've got to stick in the law of the grant side. Don't talk about administrative side terminology. They'll, they'll destroy you there. So another church is... The leader of the Calgary church says the move installing a fence around a spruce grove, a Alta, the church that was, that has been uh, holding gatherings in contravention of the province's public health order was the right one to take, but it was a shame it took so long. You, this pastor uh, really needs to be moved, moved off of the continent because he is already bought into, he has no separation of church and state there, and he didn't assert the law by accepting it was the right thing to do and a shame that took so long. You want to do something to, 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 def to defend yourself? You're shameful. You think you're a saint? No, no, we've got to do the Romans 13 government. Government's right 100% of the time. No, that's the, that's the adulteration. That's the mimic. We can buy into that or else we can get a backbone and we get some principle, have our principle, research for our principle, whatever it is, folks. Wherever that is, make sure it's the principle. And the, they say the truth shall set you free. I don't know what sets you free. It's inside to be set free. I'm not, a, I'm not burdened the, when I talk to you about problems. I am engaged with what I can shown to focus on and at the, try to put my 100% my into that. Don't know what that means. I just know that's what I'm doing. I'm not burdened by the wrong. I just know it's a thing to be stopped. And if we don't, we're going to be some trouble. So this uh, gentleman, uh, this supposed pastor, is saying, oh, good, good, a church got closed off. Can you understand the, 
how, the, if you will, the devil works in the world right now. You're seeing the dualities everywhere. And when you see that in the world, you're looking at a soon-to-be-dissolved foundation from which people can respond if they even have an idea. And this is why we require, I keep saying, you're required to go find an objective basis that cannot be assailed. Why? Because the foundational, it has to be foundational that no one can alter. Why? Because this happens, and part of the problem where a pastor could say, oh, I'm convinced by the who, not because I'm a rock star, I like rock stars, or that I'm into nature, but the World Health Organization is my god, it creates my idols, and I will worship them, and good, it took another church down. Where Why did the who alter the definition of herd immunity? An article of how the deception works is nothing new. I've talked to you about it. Just another one at the same time period. Some man stands on principle. He's standing standing upright. We'll see. Hope, hopefully he's got enough behind him. They're not going to touch him. Another pastor been trying to stand up. But to me, it seemingly was done in uh, maybe weak ways. And he's sitting there crying. And he's got a third party in the, supposedly in the same jurisdiction. Says good. Should have happened sooner. Shame that it didn't. And he's believing on the shifting sand, like the WHO changing definitions of immunity, like the WHO changing vaccines, which gives the illusion that there's an authority to even have that say and to impose it from foreign sources onto your local domestic locale against you, where there's no medical report starting the matter or a determination that, that proves and determines the point, at least by some record evidence. Why did who uh, alter the definition? Well, it's moving the goalposts. And we could read about this. Uh, uh, it talks about, uh, I don't know, I, I start to read it. I go, well, I've talked about this. The point is that the, you're building your foundation. Be careful not to build your foundation on sand. And we're told that, too. It's a principle, folks. I don't have to, nature tells us that. I don't care about where, if, oh, it's in the Bible or not. You know, oh, click turn off because I'm talking religious stuff. No, these are principles. You put your faith in these guys, you put and they create idols, and you're going down the tube. That's falsity. That's not truth. We were in our even in our own uh, nature, we, we were able to have the common sense to choose, and that was left to us apparently. Why aren't we doing that? Making that choice correctly. But they keep putting this stuff on shifting sand. We got a pastor up in Canucas and say, "Good, we should have beat up on those churches before." Does he understand what he's talking about? Does he understand he's acting, saying that violence should be brought upon people that, in their nature, is good natured? None of which that I know of. None of them pointed out. Well, I've got a communicable disease order on me. The church was deemed to be a, a communicable disease source. It was deemed a risk to the population. Not anybody said on those stories. And yet we have a so-called pastor of authority saying it should have happened sooner. He's not. He's tied in with the state. There's other governments coming. You have people that are literally insane. They're possessed, folks. I don't even know what to think about. They've just got to be possessed by something because it ain't normal. And we don't want their normal. And yet this is spread. This cancer is spreading. Oregon wants to make COVID-19 restrictions permanent and track all vaccine refusers. Refusers. You're presumed to be a, a vector. You asymptomatic. Mandatory face masks. Creating the false front that you will never face the truth and never live in, in liberty. Mandatory face masks. Physical distancing and business capacity limits in the authoritarian and other authoritarian Wuhan coronavirus restrictions could soon become permanent fixtures in Oregon if proposed rule, new rule gets enacted in the state. As I read that, I think it has to go, yeah, till May 4th. Those of you that are interested to in, um, in Oregon, you should file your uh, comment. You need to file your comment. Oh, not what well, you have rights and not you don't have the right. You declare the fraud. You declare the statute not followed. You declare that nobody has been determined the medical thing. They don't have a right they cannot def make anything mandatory, and it can't be statewide because the, in, in Oregon, at least, it has to do over particular areas, which has not been declared 
Start coming in with a better word in your mouth. Make your comment. What did I say? How did they subvert your law? The legislative intent was to promulgate rules. This is Department of Occupational Safety and Health, Oregon Department of Occupational Safety and Health. It is an agency. It is promulgating a rule. It is going to subvert a a structure. It's going to ignore all the prerequisites that were supposed to happen. Those of you in Oregon, make a comment. Do you have it? You don't want to go to court? Here. This is where it starts, right here. You can't write a letter. You can't sit down and re- just have the base. You can't get the basics of what's supposed to happen. I don't know. You can't set the principles up in you to be righteously indignant or being trespassed against you to do something. Then we are going to, we will suffer the wrath. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what else to say. Interesting, as I now move on, how they go through all this, they're going to make mandatory these things, okay? All these mitigation levels where they haven't, not one person has been told by the law that they are the risk to the population, and given the opportunity, no less, to do something that would make them either less a risk or not a risk. I, I don't talk about that next step too much, do I? No, no, they tell you that you're you're a potential risk, and they give you all the facts, and then you have the opportunity to maybe do a habeas. But when it's if you don't, then uh, you are given a guideline on how you will not be as risky or not risky, and you have a choice to comply before they they put you in quarantine. Did you any of you all get that due process, folks? Or are you just going to live underneath the mask of truth instead of the truth? You're going to face the truth of your inaction is causing the problem, or or you're going to live behind your own mask, the mask of your own face, even the veil. Comes out all this more information now. SARS CoV 2. I think I got this from Jules. I hadn't heard from Jules for a long time. I went onto Twitter. One, I finally went on and looked at her account and uh, see she was still posting. So, Jules, uh, glad to hear you see you're still out. I think she posted this and I went and read it. Pretty interesting. SARS CoV 2 spike protein elicits cell signaling in human host cells. Implications for possible consequences of COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, the short story on this is that synthetic protein has the ability to cause cell signaling, which causes your body to do other things. They try to claim it's on an adenovirus. It's that they'll say this on the, on the vector, this viral vector stuff. Oh, it's innocuous. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with what this. Uh, so-called SARS-CoV-2 spike is. That's the synthetic one that they knew in 2013. They tried The CDC tried to get a patent on. That's why they knew all about it in 2013 and uh, relative to its existence. But this uh, spike protein actually has the capacity, as I've been saying, relative to not, I've been saying that my, well, because I'm so brilliant, we've been told and I read and I reported that this spike protein has a way to trigger and does things in your cells which causes other cells to be able to cause this communication in cells that are not normal. And this study, when you get down to the conclusion, is this should not actually be being used on young people or healthy people. It will cause something called pulmonary hypertension. It's the very same thing as I said, the COVID symptoms. This report's terrorizing, I guess. They, these folks know that this is going to do this. The paperwork's out there to let you know that it's out there to do this. They warn against and more studies and more models they need to show to find out whether or not it will harm you. It causes the very debility disabilities that the uh, they claim the COVID does. If it's been synthetic, then you would think so, wouldn't you? Well, here's a dog. Here's a study that shows you the possible consequences of your COVID vaccine, it is nothing but more than those harms that they keep telling you about. They already know it. I went to the CDC, understanding viral vectors, COVID-19 vaccines, viral vector vaccines, just kind of, I can't get away from this. Is this the V movie? That mask, folks? What was that covering? I told I talked about all this. Guy Fox. What was that all covering what he was actually doing? What did they promote with that mask and how well everybody adopted to that mask? That veil. And here we come out with the viral vector vaccines. V, Vinny. How do you like that? 
Boy, what a ring that has, right? They'll go and explain to you what this thing's all about. They're promoting, they're selling it to you. They go and explain that scientists began creating viral vectors in 1970. There's your novel nonsense that's been on everybody since then. Everyone wants to put that little video from the 60 Minutes where well, that guy, that reporter is talking about the what the Hong Kong flu in 1976. 1970 is when the technology started. And they mentioned Zika flu and HIV. It's all part of it. The CDC is promoting this thing of viral vector vaccines. And they're trying to promote and sell you that they're okay. They say these are harmless vaccines. They don't say the protein strip is is harmless. The protein spike is harmless. And it's synthetic. They'll tell you. They'll give you the date, the 2003 date the CDC knew about that they wanted to patent this thing. And so these are the things that are coming down mandatory as long as you continue to mask your own self and not step up with your own, with righteously, with the law that being denied that was made to protect you, that did fulfill what the protections were supposed to secure to you. As long as people are silent and let the next guy do it, when you see the attorneys having trouble in the system, you're going to have to try and avoid that judicial system. And the only way I know to do it is do it administratively. And then put it in a context that they can't, there's not many places to go. So we were talking before, they use all these mandatory things with all this adverse consequence going on. With you advert, they they talk about, they give it a, they they brand this stuff. Now viral vector vaccines, and they say that they're, oh, they're, they're okay to use. And that causes more people to buy into this thing. It makes your job, if you try to resist, even harder. It, it, it's not easier as we move forward. And then they make it, they round up people. And this came through a new, new, new York bill, which I found kind of terrifying. Now, what doesn't terrify me is this appears to be a concentration camp bill out of New York that if it was attached to the five or so steps for a communicable disease, I probably would say, yeah, we need something like this for people that don't want to, that are a problem, that don't want to keep people protected. They do have a, th- a real thing, and they are trying to hurt people. Maybe there's a way that, you know, this is quarantine on mass scale, but this is the problem. If you've noticed that no, no one in the world executed upon the duty and obligation of the public health official to first get the report on a particular, someone particular, and then determine that they were uh, have the thing, not the disease, but the infectious agent, and none of them have done that. When you read something about this New York bill, one of the passages says, removal and detention of cases, contacts, and carriers who are, may, who, or, who are or may be a danger to public health, you better take a, a view about this detention of cases Remember the word cases was fabricated. That these folks, and when they talk about groups of people relative to this, and you now have the evidence the government will not execute on what the legislature has written for you. This is what I was telling you is going to be the terror that will allow, at least in New York if it passes, that church that got fenced off, all those people will be rounded up and put in the concentration camps that you've been hearing about. And nobody knows the first thing about, they should, about addressing the failure of the duty and running a habeas corpus through that. The provisions of this section shall be utilized in the event that the governor declares. The governor declares. Look at the power the governor has been given, even though it's a fraud. It declares a state of health emergency due to an epidemic of any communicable disease. That's the point. Where was the epidemic found by the first medical reports and sufficiently in number to make more than what? An outbreak. Go read the statute. There's a stepping up of how this works. It's not just anything. No jurisdiction has focused on that phrase, that clause, that condition, an epidemic. This purports to create concentration camps, this act. And I want you to start to understand what I've been telling you about how you have to be able to deal with this. You need to be able to cut yourself from the herd. 
that they've now created and moved the fence and post to make asymptomats part of the problem when the law never allowed for it and still doesn't allow for it. This doesn't even allow for it, but they ignore, and they've been allowed to ignore, and the Bar Association allows it to be ignored that there have been any determination actual of an actual epidemic pursuant to the public the communicable disease code. See, the governor declares it's absent the connection to the standard. And so this is a somewhat of a, when you read through this, it's somewhat terrifying what they do have on the books, how quickly it came. What I see, I look at how, how many people will not respond to it and how it may, be looked, may look acceptable to people. And what this is, it sets it up for being able to just round up anybody. And this gets us back when they came for the, the Christians and I wasn't, I didn't respond. They came for the atheists, I didn't respond. They came for whatever, I didn't respond. And then they came for me. Yeah, this could be the next, the next declaration by the governor because no one stepped up and they learned that no one would step up. And those that did, didn't quite do it right. Remember, nobody ever yet has, has challenged that there was even an epidemic. No, they've agreed to the fraud. That's the Bar Association. So it's quite refreshing to watch a young attorney, an inspiring, an inspired attorney, a reverent attorney within the construct of justice, really believing that it exists, walking into the fact of it. It's all covered. There's a veil over the over the fraud and deceit, and he's still coming to terms with it. And I'm sitting there listening, saying, "Yeah, I'm surprised that he still thinks it's something of virtue, because it's been a corruption. It's been almost a plan that way, in a way." And no one said anything about that. So as you also think you can, well, I'll just move to an area, I'll just move out of, I'll just move out of uh, New York, or whatever. Well, this is going to go start maybe likely rolling across the place. A lot of places already have these statutes for the roundup of people. But this one is more blatant about that they can do masses of people and how the minimization of the notice to each one, which means that you're going to have to know to go to that notice and att- attack that as well. That one notice is going to be for all, so you you can still attack it by that one notice. It actually should be simpler when you see that, but uh, most people won't understand it that way. That that these uh, these laws are there, but now they're making them more look less constrained by due process provisions. uh, That you think you can leave a place, well, you better get out. You better get out uh, quicker than you can't move from the UK. Apparently, even though the Queen says you have a right to, to move around, and this becomes so important in the context of what that officer was saying that an ex policeman. The queen has already allowed this. If, if the queen could could deny it, she, if we could give her that much credit, she's allowed that you have the right to travel about. But it's official now an offense to leave England in a little reported but significant development to, in the push to establish the post-COVID fascist global government. The UK's democratic debating chamber, the House of Commons, approved an emergency measure that will impose heavy fines on British people who leave the country without a qualifying reason. And this article goes through and explains how there will be really no qualifying reason, unless of course you're of a member of the House of Commons or those essential to the imposition of the fraud and the oppression. And inter- an interesting insight for those of you in England, I found it fascinating as a counter set off for the the fact that the, the, the believing the policeman Passport say the Queen has already authorized your ability to move about the country, which means you can leave it. And so this is, again, government violating the promise or the obligations of the Queen to the people. And I found that a very interesting application by the officer clearly stating how the hierarchy is to be applied, which I've been very similarly stating, but not for the U.K., but similarly stating for what you do in the United States, which we were supposed to even be beyond the question, weren't we? So you look inside what he's, if we have no clue in the United States because we're, so, we're really that dumbed down, we're that absent of what we're supposed to do, but other than well, I have rights. No, specifically, what, where does the authority come from? We have to take what they say the queen gave, and then we have to say, well, the people did that for themselves, gave, and granted. And this is where you get to the trust breaches within the office of the established government. The government's a framework. It's inert. So the government's not bad. It's those inside it that have not been able to be brought to justice, to brought to fulfill the duties and obligations, and that's on the people. That's on the people themselves, and that was what was written in. That was the failure that was written in. There's no automatic fix for that. The people have to be 
tolerant to it to allow it than intolerant to stop it. Vaccine passports. So we move from, the Queen says you can move around about the country if, or, and more, uh, but now the bureaucrats are saying, no, you're going to be heavily fined for even uh, for leaving. So if you've got money, see, it's all about the buck. It has nothing to do with, with talking about health, does it, or communicable disease, nothing at all. But they want to fine you. They want to put woe on you. They want to tax you. Now we move into, well, I guess your regular passport where this queen over there in the U.K. says you got the right to move about the country. You're going to have a vaccine passport now. Totally counter to that. Where have we seen this documentation like this before? On the same website as I found the other story, again, looking around, you know, I find one lead and go on to the next. Uh, this gentleman writing about this nonsense, this crime against the people, how it comes about. He points us to, where did this happen again? How did they have vaccine passports? He cites a little story here. Uh, passports were introduced uh, for urban residents, Sov Kojosniks and the workers of Nova Stroikis, a major construction site of a new town plant, railway station, etc. According to the 1926 Soviet census, 82% of the population in the Soviet Union was rural. Kol Konik Kolniks, eh. Individual peasants did not have passports and could not move into towns without permission. Permissions were given by chairpersons or collective farms or rural councils. Repeated violations of the passport regime was a criminal offense. Passports were issued by the People's Commensurate of Internal Affairs, Soviet law enforcement. So he ties this this problem directly over to the Soviet and uh, points out what your UK government has done contrary to what the Queen has promised or done or undertook or promised or secured and contrary to the religion as well, since she's also tied in by oath to support and protect that. And so if you just start sitting down and realizing this threat is, is real, you, you can delineate more formally, line by line, point by point, and not necessarily so many points, because if you go right from the Queen to your right, I don't know how many more sentences you need relative to how they are intruding. They have no authority. You can point that out on the other side. So this is us making this important. So I thank the ex-policeman for explaining UK law so succinctly that I, I could even follow it and say, well, I just got to get those facts together and I have myself at least a statement. And that gives me, at least for the United States interpretation, that establishes for me that someone under color of law is trying to take a right and a property. That's a felony. That's a, a really powerful position. And if you get more people understanding these are felonies against us, then maybe, maybe, maybe more of us will rise up better. We'll have that established record better so that we then don't have to get beat down like we see people. We don't have our churches being fenced off just like we see the mask on the face the virus being so small, it would be as if a killer bee would hive is coming at you through a chain link fence is the same thing out. For example, it's the same veil against the truth that is being put on by government, government officials, but not government necessarily. Again, that's just a framework. It's, these are people that are evil, 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 could care less. Now, okay, so that's, I think I'm going to end there. We have the ability to step up. We have to use that speech we have right, the right of redress of grievance in the First Amendment to be able to say, to be able to speak, and they can't stop that either. Now, that hasn't been necessarily obvious to what's going on, but let's move that freedom of speech into the current world where digi your digital life, your digital world, your social credit will be, your green pass will be. Uh, they, use the inter they use the digital technology. The technocrats are using this digital technology that is bound now we know is cancel cancel culture. They use this technology to cancel you out with this literally the a push of a button anymore. That you that is not natural, first of all. That that's not a thing that we are used to and men and women is not natural to us. If the grid goes down it disappears. That's how, how nebulous this whole thing is. It's a fiction. It's not intelligence, it's not sentience, it's not conscience. It's none of those things. And yet they mimic, they put a mask on it like it is, and then we get into the problems of communication and who can shut you off 
An interesting little thing came through that Clarence Thomas talked to in a concurring opinion and, uh, relative to the potential attack that may be able to be done where we're limited in our ability to tell others of a potential harm uh, coming on us. And I've, you have to look into this a little bit, but I found it interesting. And so I'm going to take a little bit of time here to read a couple of passages from a, it was in a list of uh, de- denials and agreements of the Supreme Court to take cases. And, and uh, this happens to be relative to that court case where President Trump, I think, was on Twitter and got cut out. Uh, he got cut down and they allowed that. The petition, I'll read a little bit here. The petition of search, writ of search area is granted. This is the writ to go argue in, before the Supreme Court. The judgment is vacated and the case is remanded to the United States Circuit Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit with instructions to dismiss the case as moot. It's not viable anymore. And the reason was, and they make a comment to, was the fact that President Trump is no longer an official. The administration's no longer in office. And so that sets up what, what this case was about. They granted certiorari, but they then remanded the thing that it's moot because there's no party. President Donald Trump, then President of the United States, blocked several users of the interacting from interacting with his Twitter account. They sued. The circuit court held that the comment threads were a public forum and that the then President Trump violated First Amendment by using his control of Twitter account to block the plaintiffs from accessing the comment threads. And uh, But Mr. Trump, is, it turned out, had only limited control of the account. This is Clarence talking, talking, and concurring, and explaining a fuller idea here. What he ends up talking to is how you might, if you listen carefully, what might be entertained as a counter to what they're doing to shut you out in the public sphere of digital realm, which is not really a place. This also brings up a lot of new ideas that we might be able to use that I wanted to touch a a little bit on. I only have a few minutes here. Uh, The Twitter account permanently removed the account. The Twitter had more power and removed the account uh, of that. Because of the change in the presidential administration, the the court correctly vacates the second's decision. He separately writes to note the petition highlights principles of legal difficulty that surround the digital platforms, namely that applying old doctrines to new digital platforms is rarely straightforward. The similarities between the digital platforms and common carriers and places of public accommodation may give uh, legislators strong arguments for similarly regulating digital platforms. It stands to reason that if Congress may demand that, that telephone companies operate as a common carrier, it can also ask the same of digital platforms. He starts to develop this and says the legislators can then make these businesses subject even though they're privately held. In other words, the Supreme Court may not be able to respond until legislators do. And so this starts to lead us into what you might consider to do uh, to help uh, to advance the fact of getting that and done. He says uh, in page 13, in exchange for regulating transportation and communication industries, governments, both state and federal, have sometimes given common carriers special government favors. And so this is the coercive nature of what goes on and the gifts that are given by government. It's not for the people, but it's for the businesses, remember here. And so you have to start paying attention to how this works. And I'm not going to be able to get there as time has evaporated. But I'll have to get to maybe this next week. I mean, uh, thank you, Grimner, for what you're at reallibertymedia.com and uh, those that subs- uh, subsequently post the broadcast, I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass.